Yeah. So yeah, 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 man, yeah. How 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 does this is pretty good, right? It's pretty good. I was gonna wait till uh this for to open it up if you want. Okay, so do you want to do it now or at the end? Well, I was gonna drink it throughout. Oh, okay. Listen. Okay. Let's crack it open. So, Johnny, thank you for coming on the Creative Block Podcast. Let's uh I guess start it off with yeah. uh well cheers. Little cheers. Uh, I, I hear you got some uh some some I guess some big news, some some good news. The player's pretty good. Oh, it's like reminds me of uh was it like them like Flintstones push pops. Oh yeah, yeah. Those are good. Yeah, dude. This it's probably top three for me now, which is funny. Top well, two maybe. Yeah. I, I'd say this is like my favorite is probably like the citrus. Mm-hmm. But I mean this is pretty good. Citrus, interesting. That one's pretty good. Underrated though. Is it? You you think you think it's underrated? Um, I feel like it just doesn't get the hype because it's not like the cool names, but I, I I like the flavor. I don't know. It really, it's like a, I like Mountain Dew, so it's like oh, kind of yeah, reminds yeah. me a little bit of the, like, that Mountain Dew flavor. It so is, it is pretty good. Appreciate it. Oh, so we have uh, Johnny Hochstetler, right? Did I yeah, say that Hochstetler. Right? Awesome. So again, thank you for coming on. Um, we've known each other for quite some time. We've worked together before. So I guess for our listeners who don't know you, let's give a little intro who you are, what you do. Sure. Uh, so my name is Johnny Hochstetler. Um, I do video and photo work professionally for a living. Um, and I also have a YouTube channel. Uh, and I'm kind of diving into the content creator influencer life as well. So uh, commercial space as well as like the side hustle. And that's kind of I'm all over the place right now, but a little bit of it all. Yeah, it's uh, what's well, most recently we've been kind of coining that uh, like the the modern day creator. That's cool. Because uh, kind of everybody, I mean, I guess for the most part, pretty much everybody that lives on social media at, at in one form or another, you know, they're making content, creating content. So, oh my God, I hate this train. That's one thing I don't like about this spot is the oh, train good. <laughs> throughout the day. But um, yeah, that, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, a, a lot of people, you know, living in the social media space, they're creating content in one form or another. But it's, uh, it's unique for you because, you know, you kind of do it. For your day job but also kind of have like a totally different side of mm-hmm. how you create and what you create you know kind of like as a side side gig so with that being said um you know there's a few things i want to talk about but i i guess let's uh i guess kind of how, how how do you even get to started creating uh sure so you want me to go back a little bit yeah let's let's kind of i so one one of the things that has been pretty cool with the podcast is kind of just digging just kind of trying to get a little insight to the roots of you know how people kind of got their start in the sure. space Cool. So um, kind of just going like way back for a second. Um, I was always like a big athlete my whole life, everything like that. Um, and then when it came to high school, I never really knew what I wanted to do. I think I was just going to go to like a trade school. I was going to become like a chef or a mechanic or something because I was just like school wasn't my thing. Like, you know, math, science, anything like that. Um, it wasn't really my vibe. Um The only thing I did like, I guess, as far as like science went is I really like chemistry and I actually was going to be a food chemist at one point until I learned that I didn't like all the technical stuff of chemistry. But um, yeah, so long story short, basically uh, my senior year of high school, I started taking um, just like some easy art classes to get my GPA up. So just me and a bunch of freshmen in like these art classes. Um, And I took like a Photoshop class. Um, I started like doing some you know, basic graphic design stuff. I just kind of fell in love with that. So, um, fast forward from that, um, I ended up going to CCAD here, um, in Columbus, Ohio, which is Columbus college of art and design, um, for graphic design. Um, just cause that was kind of my passion. That's what I did like that last year of high school a lot. Um, and then I was going for graphic design. Everything was cool with that. Um, but I just was doing video work for fun in my free time with friends and stuff like that, just documenting things. Um, and then it just kind of hit me one day. I was like, oh, I could just like change my major to like video and like photo stuff. Cause I just do that anyways. Um, and so I just kind of changed my major over to that, um, started just getting better at that stuff, met a lot of people, networked stuff like that throughout college. Um, and then, um, just started freelancing during college as well. And then that's kind of what started it all for me. So just started doing video and photo work. That was 11 years ago. And haven't looked back since. Yeah, it's uh, what what are some of the biggest takeaways would you say compared to like when you started off, you know, that you've kind of honed in and, and picked up along the way? Um, 
man, something I picked up. You know, I, I think it's just interesting because I feel like each phase you think you're pretty good. Um, and then like, you know, every six months or every year you look back at your work and you're just like, wow, I was absolute trash, which is really funny because at the time you're like so hyped about it. But I also think that's a sign that you are growing and you're progressing because yeah. if, you, if you look back and you're like, oh, my best work was three years ago, you might want to like figure out what you're doing these days. You know yeah, what I mean? You might have to do some reevaluation. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's my biggest takeaway is that I think I've always kind of won up myself over time. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of always evolving. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's, you know, I got before when I first came across you, so like we have a mutual friend in Michael Tobin and that's really how I kind of got introduced to you in the first place. Um, and like, I don't remember, I don't, I don't remember exactly if it was like on Twitter or if it was on somewhere on social media and, uh, started seeing you guys interacting a lot. And, um, you know, it, and we're like, oh shit, you're from Columbus too. Mm -hmm. So I seen I want to say that was probably maybe like two and a half, maybe close to three years ago and seeing the progression of kind of like your, your social media presence over the last few years has been like, even, even going from like last year when we did the ghost shoot, which yeah. we're obviously we'll, we'll get into here in a little bit, but um, just seeing like the growth has, it's, it's, I feel like it's now you're kind of like in the beginning of like, right. This, this, this new trajectory that you're, you're taking. So I, I kind of want to talk a little bit about that. Like what, what has one, what has that been like for you? And, and like in, in this like modern age of like the social media influencers mm -hmm. and like content creation, like what has that meant for you as like what, with what you want to do, but also like, you know, like what are, what are like the, some of the biggest takeaways you've taken from there? Like I got, I know it's like, yeah, a, yeah. it's a loaded question. No, no, that is a good question. Um, just to go back a little bit. So it makes sense. Um, you know, I feel like what I do is a little bit unique because, you know, I'm coming from coming up on seven, eight years of like commercial professional work. Um, and then about, uh, you know, just like companies I worked for, you know, I worked for Rogue Fitness, making content for them, uh, you know, for almost five years. And then over the past coming up on two and a half years, um, I worked for Express doing, you know, video work for them. Um, in, you know, high level fashion, commercial photo shoots sets with, you know, 30, 40 plus people like massive shoots. Um, so it's kind of interesting because I had, you know, the whole fitness experience of the commercial world. And then I've kind of had the larger fashion retail side of things. Um, and then, you know, a couple of years ago, I decided to start my YouTube channel as well. And really the reason with that was, is because at that time I was looking for a new job. That's kind of when I found express and started that whole thing. And I just needed like a passion project for myself because I just kind of felt lost creatively. Nothing was really getting me excited about making content. I wasn't looking forward to making videos or anything like that. Um, and I was always watching YouTubers and people that I look up to. And I was just like, man, that'd be so cool. And I think like it just got to that breaking point where I was just like, why don't I just try it? You know what I mean? So, um, that's kind of like a little bit of the background of what I do. So, you know, over the past coming up on about two years now, like solid years, um, I've been doing, you know, full-time creative 40 plus hours a week, um, in the commercial world. But then also I've been trying to grow a YouTube channel at the same time. And, you know, a lot of people do YouTube on the side of like a career, but I don't think it's always necessarily like a full-time creative job. A lot of times people are freelancers, or, you know, they're in a different industry. Um, but I've kind of tried to mix a little bit of my knowledge of the industry into like my own personal work. Um, and that's kind of what I've been doing. Yeah. And like, yeah, you know, it's pretty interesting kind of seeing how, how it's evolved. Right. And like, uh, a lot of it has been through, you know, I guess like a, another, like, common theme here like more and most recently but like the episodes has been centered around like consistency and you know just really um being able to kind of like manage like a combination of like passion projects and like your your like regular day-to-day -day work and and how has that like what are some of the things that that have propelled you to 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 be consistent to continue to show up because you know it's it's you know when like when you look at the at the progression that you've made it's you know, to some, to some, it may seem like, oh, you know, you just kind of like blew up here, mm. you know, like over the last few weeks, but mm. it's, it's been like a grind for 
for a, n- a number of years, you know? For sure. Yeah. I think it's interesting because I, I definitely don't think I've blown up whatsoever. You know what I mean? I still consider myself very small. Um, and yeah, it, it's like, you know, it, it, it's a weird thing because about like two year, two years ago when I started this, it was very just like when I had some extra time, I would, you know, create some stuff and see what happens with it. Um, and then I think just the more serious I got about it, um, I had to get really serious about consistency. I had to plan out my weeks. I had to plan out, you know, what I want to shoot that for that coming month or what days were I going to be able to shoot and things like that. Because I think that's like the biggest tip that anyone can have is consistency when you're trying to create this content. Cause especially if you're doing this on top of other work, if you don't have any sort of plan, like you just are screwed basically, you know what I mean? Like, so this past week I was actually on a seven day shoot to the West coast Um, and I try to post a YouTube video every week and, uh, for the past coming up on like three months now, I try to post on Instagram at least, um, I try to do it once a day. Um, and so I basically batch shot before I left for my trip so I could have a YouTube video and post ready for every single day of the week, you know, and if I didn't take the time to do all that stuff beforehand, you know, it would have just been like, well, I'm busy this week, so I'm not going to do it, you know, but I think those little things, It might not make a big difference right up front, but if you do that week to week or, you know, months at a time, those little things do build up and they really do add up. Yeah. It's uh, it's, it's like crucial. I mean, it's something that I'm learning myself to, you know, even with like this podcast is just being more consistent with like, uh, be more intentional with how I prioritize like the, you know, when I allot time to, to do certain things Mm and, and, you know, like you said, on top of, you know, whatever the day to day you know, grind and work that you need to get done. So I, I think it's very, very essential in that sense that like, yeah, if you don't got, if, if, you, if you don't have a plan, you're really not, you're kind of setting yourself up to, you're not setting yourself up for success because you're kind of, you know, you're just going to get, be lost in the weeds trying to do this and that. And well, right. And it's like, I made myself like a challenge, like a month ago, I was like, all right, I'm going to post on Instagram for 30 days in a row, every single day. Um, and I had a couple weeks off there around work. So it was a little bit easier for me. Uh, you know, I'd wake up and I'd just be like, Oh, what do I want to post today? And I would like figure out a photo or a video and do it and then post it. Um, and then once I was going back to work, I quickly realized that it's, I can't just figure it out every single day or it becomes like way too stressful or like half-assed or, you know, like not the best version. Um, so I just, it was just plain and simple right there. I was just like, I have to plan out my content or it's not going to be to the level that I want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's like I said, it's very essential, you know, just kind of having, having, having that plan and, and being able to kind of put things together just so that way you have some direction, right. Which way you want to go. And do you, how, how is that? Did, did it take you a long time? Did it, was that something that you kind of had, like really what, what was it that like drove you to like, yeah, I really need to like figure this out. Like, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think honestly a really big turning point for me, there's two that stick out. One was, um, you know, back when, uh, I don't know, should I say COVID? Yeah. we Okay. We I didn't know about it. Yeah. Cause sometimes I say like the C word on YouTube so I don't <laughs> get demonetized. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I haven't, I haven't really had any issues like that, but it's sorry. I should ask. Um, but yeah, ba- back when like COVID first started, I was, um, for load from work, which is basically just like, I didn't have a job yeah. for like three or four months. Um, and so I think a lot of people kind of went two routes during that time. Either they, you know, cause I know a lot of friends, the same thing happened. Either they just started, you know, just sitting at home drinking and playing Xbox all day, or they like picked up, you know, a side hustle or a hobby or something else. Um, and I basically took that time as a blessing in disguise. And I was like, this is my chance to see what going full-time YouTube would be like, because I'm just taking my unemployment check and, you know, I basically just have unlimited time now. This is what I wanted. So like, let's see what can happen. Um, and so that was a really big turning point for me because I was just like banging out content and that I think the most important thing, not only was, you know, I started to see some traction from that just because it was a lot more volume and more consistent, but also I saw that I personally enjoyed doing that. So Once I saw what my life could be like, if that was, you know, me doing that full time, I think I got more encouraged that, you know, if I put in this work someday, maybe this could be happening. So that was just like naturally um, a really big turning point because I saw how exciting it could be someday. Um, 
and then basically once I went back to work after all that happened, it was like a really hard adjustment because I was wanting to create the same level of content and the same amount of content. But, you know, I was just like literally taking away like 50 hours a week. Um, and so that was like really tough for me. I kind of had like a weird drought there where I was just always in like a creative funk. I just like couldn't get through it. Um, and then it was about, I think it was in September, which is crazy. It wasn't that long ago. That's what, like maybe like five or six months ago. Um, I remember the new iPad mini came out and I was like, you know what? Like I love making videos about tech. And at that point, my content or my YouTube channel was still a little bit all over the place. It was about camera gear, it was about tech. I was throwing in some random vlogs or just videos about anything I wanted to. Um, and I was like, you know what? I've been wanting to get more into tech stuff. This is a device that excites me. I'm gonna make a video about this. Um, and not only did it do well, I really enjoyed making it. Um, and it just felt like natural. And I feel like that video is what made me realize like, okay, I kind of see the future of what my channel is gonna be. And you know, that was, I wanna say is like 120 videos into it um, or something like that, crazy. Um, and then, I was so excited about that. It just kind of felt right. Um, I just started going like super hard at it. And so I started taking stuff way more seriously. Um, I was excited about this stuff I was doing. So I was posting more about it on Instagram and other platforms. Um, I started seeing some spike in growth in that as well. Um, and so it was just like, you know, when you get that feeling of like, I think I actually tweeted about this yesterday or maybe it was today, but I was like that feeling of seeing a spike in growth, like on a platform that you really want like there's no better feeling than that. Like it's such a rush and such a high that like you want to chase that all the time. Um, so that's kind of, yeah, I mean, we, that, that's, that's something we've talked about a lot here on the podcast. It's, uh, it's kind of like, uh, uh, creatives in general, they kind of, we're always kind of chasing that, uh, you know, it's, it, it, you know, it's different for, for everyone, but I feel like you're kind of chasing that, that feeling that you get from, you know, that sense of accomplishment or fulfillment from like creating something or, or getting some kind of feedback from something that you made. Right. You know, you're kind of always like chasing that. So it's, yeah, it, it's, yeah, I, I'm, I'm constantly chasing that. Like I've had, you know, like some, some very fun shoots in the past that I've like, yeah, I want to recreate this like every time. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, with that, like you, you know, you're, you're seeing this growth, how, has how has like looking into like analytics and being like super technical obviously you know you you talked about you know creating the work that you know you want to create or things that you enjoy and mm -hmm. talking about things that you you know that you do enjoy what you know how much of like that do you pay mind to like as far as like analytics or you know being like very um uh, i guess uh very strategic with like are with yeah. how you create or what you put out um, yeah, I, I'm probably too into it to be honest. Really? Um, I think it's a blessing and a curse, but like I am, you know, I will check analytics, even like, you know, what time of day is the best time for me to post on Instagram based on like your viewers and following and stuff like that. Um, I like live in like the SEO for YouTube as well. Just, you know, capitalizing on everything from the title to the tags of the video to the description. Uh, the big thing on YouTube is the thumbnail. And so, a lot of times that stuff, it, well, it is for a fact more important than just the video itself because if someone doesn't click on it, it doesn't matter. Um, or if it's not showing up, it doesn't matter. Um, so I think it's very easy though to get like kind of too obsessive. You're checking your analytics all day long or like you post a new piece of content and it's not doing well in the first 20 minutes and you're like, oh, what's the point of this? Like it, it's going to tank, like what a waste of time. Um, but I, I do think it is a really important piece and I think it has helped me have a little bit of a jump start, maybe compared to some people, you know, it's interesting because I don't think my growth is very fast. Um, you know, but it is faster than some people for sure. Um, but it's also slower than some people, but I think the analytics side is really important. Um, but it can kind of become like obsessive and also like a very bad thing at the same time. Do you ever find yourself like, you know, purposely, I mean, obviously you, you make tweaks and adjustments when you create, but like, does it, does it dictate how you create or what? Um, it does for sure. I think anyone who says it doesn't is lying or they're not trying to make a career out of it. Um, you know, it's interesting because you do make stuff just for you. Sometimes there's, um, this big tech YouTuber named Sarah Dietschy. Um, and she, uh, she made a video like 
years ago, but she basically said the way she makes content is she makes one video for the viewers and then one video for herself. And she just like rinses and repeats that because, you know, if I wanted to have a channel at a million views, I would just, you know, buy the iPhone and all the colors and review each one and just do that over and over and make the same cookie cutter video and just move on. Um, so, you know, I am trying to grow, but also I want to have fun doing it at the same yeah. time. Um, and so it's, it's definitely just like a balance, but I, I do, I do definitely pay attention to trends and analytics. Um, I definitely do see what responds well to my audience, also like new audiences, but also a big part of it is like, what do I enjoy making? Um, and so it, it is a tough balance, but it kind of just depends. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Cause like, I mean, you, you, you know, like I've heard, you know, I, I know some people who like are like hyper focus on that and they literally structure, you know, like that, what you said, well, okay, well the new phone's coming out, this new piece of tech is coming out. So I'm going to, you know, focus on that and kind of ride that way for, you know, for however long, but you know, like I, you kind of notice sometimes, you know, even talking to some of those people that you kind of get burnt out or mm-hmm. they're just kind of like not feeling it because you kind of, you know, like you said, not, not necessarily creating the things that they want to create. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's, I, I find it interesting because it's like, yeah, like the metrics, they all play, you know, such a big role. Right. But it shouldn't, like, I don't know. I, I think like, especially like starting for somebody starting out, like it shouldn't really be something that's like hyper-focused. Ob- obviously you want to pay some mind to it, but you can't like, Definitely not. Yeah. Especially when you're starting out, I think the biggest thing you can, you can do is first of all, find what you personally enjoy making. Um, but also I would try different types of videos, you know, whether it be different subjects or you just film in a different way or whatever it is, because you need to see, I think I've said this before, but you need to see what sticks with other people. Then also like what sticks with yourself, because if you start a new YouTube channel or a podcast or a Instagram page, whatever, and you're like, I'm going to review microphones, and then six months into it, you realize that microphones are boring. You don't want to do it anymore, but that's your brand. Like good luck, you know, switching or like, you know, whatever. So I think you just need to try out a bunch of stuff. Um, analytics are kind of like a, they don't really matter that much until a little bit later on. Um, but they do, I think, give you like that edge against other people that don't pay attention. Yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, I guess something else I, I, I guess I can relate to is like, you know, like camera gear, right? Where, you know, new cameras comes out, lenses and all that. And it, I think like right now, like you, know, you hear a lot of people say like gear doesn't really matter. But in some instances it does. But like especially with somebody who's like learning and like starting out, it doesn't really matter what you you what the tools are that you're using more more along the lines of just like getting out there creating learning mm-hmm. you know learning this new trade and and just kind of creating right mm-hmm. it's uh like I, I guess i could kind of compare it to that where like it's like yeah it matters to an extent but it, it doesn't necessarily mean everything yeah i mean that that's such like a debate yeah people always talk about like does gear matter or not um it definitely does it does until it doesn't <laughs> right um, or it doesn't until it does it it doesn't until you can justify buying gear then it does matter yeah, I I think so. I mean, it's I don't know it's 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 interesting, right? Because like I feel like even for myself, like very early on, like it was you know watching the new review, oh, yeah. new camera comes out, everybody's dropping a video, and like okay, I want to get that, or you know you I don't know. Like I, I think for me, like it's kind of gotten to the point where like okay, well, there's only so much of uh, uh, like the law of diminishing returns of like what this new like piece of gear or whatever is going to do to you know to mm-hmm. like in, increase oh, yeah. production quality or whatever whatever it may be um but it doesn't i don't know for like i feel like for somebody who's just like starting out and trying to trying to learn like trying to learn and everything like it doesn't really matter what you're using like i don't know I, i'm i don't know I, i'm like conflicted with that because sometimes like i think it really does matter you know or but it's at the same time like i don't know i, I feel like for many I, it's even for myself at some point where like it was kind of like i don't know like people would use it as as a crutch as far as like oh well i can't do i can't do this because i don't have this piece of gear or i don't have this light or whatever it's like i I don't know it's it it definitely is a a big debate yeah it's interesting because i think you know a big thing for me that i feel like people don't always talk about is like you know it's one thing getting a new camera or a new lens or whatever if it's going to like physically make your content look better. Right. Um, I think that is up to debate. If you have 
20 followers, it's not as important. And gear right. isn't going to matter as much as if you have 20 million followers. Um, but at the same time, you know, like people like Mr. Beast uses like what type of a camera, or, you know, Casey Neistat uses like an old ass Canon camera. Right. Um, so even for him, gear doesn't matter, but it just kind of depends on your situation. Um, but what I was trying to say is, you know, a big thing for me is that I think is underrated and some people might abuse it. But for me, if I'm not excited about a piece of gear or I'm not excited um, about what I'm using, a lot of times I'm not as motivated to like create stuff with it. Like um, I'm fully confident that I could make YouTube videos or Instagram content or freelance work with pretty much any type of camera. But if it's a camera that I like, if I'm excited to use it um, and a big thing also is just like ease of use, then it's going to be way easier for me to pick up that camera and start creating some content. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, for um, sure. And I think that's a big part of like why gear does matter. Uh, cause could I make a video with an iPhone? Sure. But like that doesn't excite me. Yeah. And like, and then that's where it's like unique, right? It's like, you know, like with shoes, right. You know, like it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, there's like a different flavor for everybody, but I don't know. I, I feel like, like I've had conversations with people who are, you know, want to start a podcast or want to start a YouTube channel or or whatever. And they're like, Oh, well I, you know, I'm not going to start because I, I can't buy a big DSLR with a big fancy lens right now or whatever. And I, that's kind of like where I, where I I feel with that. But like, yeah, I I totally get you where, you know, if you have a piece of gear that you're excited to use or, you know, really enjoy something about it and like, it makes your workflow and like what you're doing easier then yeah, it, 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 in that, Mm -hmm. in that instance, it really does matter. Um, and like, and, and even kind of going back to it a little bit where, you know, where you're talking about, uh, you know, trying different things. Like, I feel like, I, I, f- I feel that that's been kind of like a common thing with a lot of like YouTubers in particular, like in this like filmmaking tech side of things where uh, I feel like a lot of, I mean, that those kinds of videos are, are kind of like little things that, that are able to like, people are able to kind of piggyback off and like get a lot of traction early on mm-hmm. creating those types of videos. And then, like, I, I've noticed, too, that, like, yeah, a lot of people kind of start off that way and kind of, like, branch off into whatever, like, their their specific lane or their niche or the, the, the thing that they like doing. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it's, is that something that you, I guess, do you, is that something that you kind of notice as well? Or Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting. Um, for some reason, the thing that I was just thinking about, May is just still piggybacking off of your doesn't matter thing, is a weird thing um, with TikTok is, you know, I feel like a lot of YouTubers and myself included, we were always like chasing like the crazy high end stuff or like the super polished, right. crazy slow motion, smooth Transitions, uh, videos. Right. right. Yeah. Um, and then like TikTok starts happening and people are getting, you know, crazy following or crazy brand deals or crazy things just from like basic videos off their iPhone. And like recently, I've kind of like taken a challenge upon myself to start making TikTok content. Uh, I actually have a buddy who like makes like super simple videos, like making fun of call of duty. Um, and he's amazing at it, but he's like over 300 K wow. on uh, TikTok um, because he's just like figured out what works and what doesn't work. And so he's always on my back. Like, dude, you gotta just try out stuff. Like it's so easy, you know? Um, and I was always like, well, I need to like figure out something that I'm excited to make, you know? And it just was for some reason it feels more justified on YouTube spending like 10 hours on a video then, you know, making like some sort of a fancy edit with like a real camera for TikTok, and then it like gets nothing. I'm just like, wow, that was like so much time wasted, you know? So I was really struggling with that. Um, so recently I kind of started making just some iPhone content for TikTok because one, it was easier, it was quicker. Um, and it was just really, I guess, just easier for me. And it was something different. And I feel like a lot of people like the native look on TikTok as well. Um, and now that stuff has been doing better for me. So it's just like, you know, what have I been doing? <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially like in the last year, it's kind of like really blown up. I, I, I don't know. Is it ever like really like too kind of too, is it ever really like too late to jump on the bandwagon? I guess no. it's, um, like, uh, so previous guest that I had Dakota, she was talking about that. Yeah. That's something that she's like more intentional with creating now is like, I, she like, you know, carves out time of her day to like knock out like a reel or an Insta or mm-hmm. a TikTok video because that's, you know, it's kind of like where a lot of the tension mm-hmm. is now. So she's like adjusted her workflow to like, yeah, shooting this on, on, you know, cell phone, 
trying to s- make it simple and like be able to like knock knock them knock the edits down you know quickly and you know obviously you you said you just said you've kind of like adjusted you've had to adjust your workflow to kind of just make it a little bit more sim- mm-hmm. simplified in that sense to you know create the yeah. content like what what are some of the things that you've kind of like picked up with with that you know kind of hopping from you know just utilizing all the different platforms you know obviously everybody like everybody consumes it with their phones but like the each platform i feel like is different like even i've i've noticed like a a, a trend too now where i feel like a lot of like reels has kind of blown up right like in the last 6 7 mm-hmm. months or whatever and it's a lot of it is uh, repurposed or recycled TikTok videos. Yeah. And there's, I guess there's really nothing wrong with that. But like, I feel like even now people are kind of starting to find a, uh, I don't know, finding like a, a, like something that's like work now with like, with reels that I feel like even the content in reels is starting to like differentiate a little bit from what you see on TikTok. Mm-hmm. How has that, like how much have, uh, attention have you paid to that? And like, has that even, you know, how how how's, how have you like incorporated that now? Because I feel like I've even with some of the content that I've noticed too, uh, you you've been now kind of like. I I feel like across all the different platforms, you're kind of like c- catering to each one individually, but mm-hmm. kind of like either plugging in like a new video or mm-hmm. something that you're working on or whatever. And like I feel like it's all it's all kind of part of like the whole like same universe. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely playing the game. Um, and I feel like I'm playing it good. And I think uh, it's funny because actually Michael Tobin's the one that picked up on this. He's the first one that ever like recognized what I was doing. But he he actually made a tweet. I'll have to find it. But he basically said, you know, like Johnny's doing like this crazy stuff. Every time he posts a YouTube video, he has a matching Instagram story with it, a matching Instagram post, a matching Twitter post, a YouTube community post. Um, and then like also like usually an Instagram reel to go along with it as well. And so I've kind of, you know, for me out of all the platforms, YouTube is most important. Um, and so I treat a lot of the other platforms as almost like ads or a way to push traffic to my YouTube channel. Um, as I've seen a little bit more growth on Instagram, that might change a little bit because I think Instagram is becoming just as important. Um, and it can kind of work both ways. Um, once you get into like having growth on all these different platforms, it's cool because you start getting messages on Instagram where people are like, Oh, Hey, I came over from YouTube. Like what's up? Or, you know, on TikTok, someone's like, Oh, Hey, I saw your post on Instagram. Like I came over here and you start seeing how like you can just like have all these things bounce around to one another. Um, and a lot of it is repurposed content. You know, like if I make a YouTube video, usually I make an Instagram reel out of the same content or like out of the same footage. Um, but you know, I'll obviously have to take a photo for an Instagram post or like whatever. Um, but I just try to be pretty smart about, you know, instead of just having a YouTube video post, um, why not post it other places and like let people know like, Hey, go check it out. So it is interesting. I'm just trying to kind of take advantage of all the different platforms and hopefully, you know, there's a big spike in one of them and like the other one can just kind of like feed off of it. But yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I, it's I, something I've, I've been meaning to ask is like, how, how intentional is it? Because it's like very, I, I think it's like noticeable and like, it's, I guess something like now that you're saying that, like, like all the big creators, they're kind of, they kind of do that. Right. And they kind of all like everybody kind of, uh, what, what's the word they kind of, you know, uh, navigate their, their traffic to, to these different, you know, places totally. wherever they want you know wherever they want people to be so it's it's uh how has that been you know you, you said it's, it's like somewhat intentional like how do you how have you navigated like carving time out for that and kind of going back to a little bit what we were talking about earlier was you know like this is kind of like something that you're doing like on the side right mm-hmm. like how do you fact how have you kind of been able to manage all of this, all of the content creation, your day job, and also being able to, you know, carve time for fitness, you know, personal life and all that. Like what, what, what what's, what's that kind of like work-life balance? It's definitely probably my biggest struggle because it, it's, it's just tough. Um, and it's something that I'm always trying to get better at. Um, and I feel like I kind of just go through waves um, where, you know, some weeks or during certain times, like there was like this new MacBook came out, right? Um, and I literally told my girlfriend ahead of time, I was like, Hey, like I'm probably 
not like going to be around this week. Cause I'm Larry doing this. Uh, like I'm making all this stuff and like, I have a whole plan. She's like, all right, like we'll just hang out this weekend. You know what I mean? Um, and so it definitely is a struggle for me. You know, the way that I look at it is I try to, I try to give myself deliverables just like a client would. Um, and I think that's helped me out a lot. And maybe what some people that just start on YouTube don't really understand so much, you know, because like in the commercial world, if we have whatever, an April campaign coming out, right. Of like camping clothing, that's going to go in the stores in April, you know, there's going to be a TV spot for it. There's going to be a YouTube video with it. There's going to be an Instagram post. There's going to be reels about it. There's going to be Instagram stories, so on and so forth. So I feel like I kind of come from that world of like, well, you know, whenever you release something, you basically have to market it everywhere. Um, and so I just kind of have like a checklist for myself with my own content where it's like, all right, I want to put out a new video. So like, obviously I have to post something about it on Instagram. Um, you know, I'm going to post about it now on TikTok and these other platforms. So it's kind of, I've just given myself these different deliverables and different like, uh, deadlines. Otherwise yeah. they just won't get done, but it is definitely a challenge because you know, the more things you have to post and the more different things you do, it's just more work. You know what I mean? So going back to like, how do I balance everything? Um, I basically, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do it, but realistically, you know, um, I work a lot of my personal content. I do just late at night. So not every single night, but I would say, you know, maybe half the nights. Um, I try to take off most of my weekends unless I have to like shoot a video. Um, but yeah, I usually just edit late at night cause my girlfriend goes to bed pretty early. Um, that's kind of like some me time. Um, and yeah, it's something that I definitely just struggle with, but you know, it probably looks a lot easier on social media, Oh yeah, but of course. it's, you know, uh, like, you know, I put out, uh, I did like my office tour video that came out yesterday. Um, but no one knows I was up till three 30 in the morning, Monday night to finish that because I told myself it had to be out on Tuesday. You know what I mean? It would have been easy to be like, well, I'll just finish it tomorrow. Yeah. But I posted it's going out tomorrow. So I had to fucking stay up and make sure it right. went out. So you kind of just got to hold yourself accountable, but it is something, you know, there is, um, there's a couple other creators and people that I've looked up to that, you know, um, there's this guy, Christian Guzman, you yeah. probably know who he is. Um, he like did this crazy big project called alpha land, but basically, you know, for a year coming on two years, he just like basically like ran himself into the ground, which isn't a good way to do it. But basically he just said, you know, there are times in your life where you have to like dig really deep. Um, and you might not be able to see your friends as much or your loved ones or, you know, maybe you just get a little bit less sleep a few nights a week or whatever it is. Um, but you know, that's time is temporary to hopefully, you know, get you over that top, um, after the fact. And, you know, I think that is where I'm, I'm at right now because what I'm doing isn't sustainable for most people. And I definitely couldn't do this forever, but you know, I think it's either going to launch me into either a career that is going to make it worth it or, you know, a side business or a full on business or full-time content creator. Um, and it's going to eventually just, you know, be an easy like switch for me. Um, and so, yeah, not, it's not a clear answer, but it's, it's not an easy thing to balance for sure. But to, the way I look at it is this temporary. So, um, I'm going to dig deep and I'm definitely not lazy about it. And you can't be, if you really, if your goals are that big. Right. And that's just kind of the way I look at it. Yeah. And like how, uh, do you feel like some of that, uh, I guess discipline or like you, you mentioned, like kind of holding yourself accountable, how much of that do you attribute to, you know, just kind of like being in, like being an athlete or, you know, even just like in fitness in general, how, how is that, uh, how, how do you feel that's like kind of played a role in, in, in your life as, as a creator? Yeah. That, um, you know, it's interesting because I feel like something that I'm really good about is if I say I'm going to do something like I have to follow through and do it. I think that's like one of my biggest pet peeves, especially with other creators is, you know, they're like, Hey, I'm starting this new series where I'm doing, you know, X, Y, and Z or, Hey, I'm starting a podcast and it's coming out every single Monday, you know, and then after three weeks, you don't hear about yeah. it again or don't see it about it. Um, and I try to be really good about that. I've never put out a schedule. I've never said what I'm doing because unless I can commit to it, yeah, you, um, I'm not going to say that because I'm not going to be held to yeah, that. Yeah. Right. Um, 
but yeah, you know, as far as like my background goes, I think a big thing for me, I guess, you know, just being in like sports and like different things throughout my entire life is just, I think that is part of just discipline. Um, and especially, you know, just even not being in sports anymore, but just like being big into fitness is no one wants to walk in the snow to the gym before they go to work, you know, or like I was on a shoot last week in LA and, you know, it wasn't easy to go to a gym at all. Or like, you know, you're standing on your feet for a 10, 12 hours for a shoot. Um, but I still made it a point that I brought workout clothes. I brought pre-workout. Um, and after, you know, a couple of shoot days, I went and hit the gym at the shitty hotel gym. Um, because I knew I'd feel better. And I was also just holding myself accountable to that, you know, and some people think that's crazy because, you know, I was flying home after the seven day shoot and I was editing my YouTube video and like, you know, one of my coworkers is like, what do you, how are you even doing that? And I'm just like, I don't want to do this. It's just, you know, it's not going to do it itself. Like I, I have to do it. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I guess it is just kind of discipline. I feel like I still struggle with that sometimes, to be honest. But, you know, I guess to me, the average person, I have more discipline than most. But I feel like I still need to improve. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's kind of, for me personally, it's it's been, uh, yeah, a challenge. And, like, it's, I, I, it's, it's kind of embarrassing just saying it. But, like, yeah, like, for me personally, I feel like I've kind of been lazy in that regard where, like, yeah, it's, I, I find those days where I do prioritize like being active, whether it's like cy- like something I, I've i picked up over the last year and a half and that I enjoy doing is cycling, um, mountain biking in particular. So like on days where I'm able to like jump on the bike and go for a ride, like I feel good. Mm-hmm. Or if I get a workout in, like I feel good. And like it's like for me more more recently now, it's kind of like seeing how how that affects my not only my mood but Mm -hmm. just having energy throughout the day to like get all this other shit done has been like very like influential and like sometimes though like you know you you get kind of like that you know like you'll wake up with like super sore or you're just exhausted and it's like it's it's for me i it's very challenging i'm like yo like okay like do i want to take like a rest day today and just kind of take it easy or Let's fucking get after it and and do that. I think a big thing too about discipline is you have to be realistic because especially when you're starting out with something, you know, take it for YouTube. If you come out and you're like, I'm going to put out four YouTube videos a week. And it's just like that. There's no way that's realistic. And maybe if you even do it for a week or two, you know, like that third week, it's not going to happen. Then you're going to get discouraged and then it's just going to be like a big downfall. And I think the same thing for fitness goes, because if you're like, oh yeah, I'm disciplined. All right. I'm going to run five miles every single day. And you're just like, sure. The discipline is doing that, but like, that's not actually realistic. So it's the same thing. If you fall off the wagon three days into it or three weeks into it, you're discouraged and it's easy to just go away from it. But if you start out with realistic goals and realistic discipline of like, Hey, I'm going to post one thing on Instagram a week and one YouTube video a month. Like you can actually do that. It's realistic. And then once you get onto that and that becomes easy for you, you're like, you know what? All right, I'm going to double that and so on and so forth. And I think it's very much carries over for the same exact kind of discipline as fitness or, you know, eating any type of thing. Um, you have to be realistic about it. And then once you kind of achieve that level, you just kind of like go up to the next one. Yeah. A good friend of mine kind of, he, he kind of likens it to, you know, like in specifically with like fitness, but yeah, you could really apply with anything that you're trying to, you know, be more consistent or kind of do more of, but he's he like, okay, well, how about getting to the gym, get to the gym. Okay. You know, get to the gym at least once a week and, you know, even if you're not necessarily working out for like doing a full workout or whatever, like just get it, get to the gym, mm-hmm. you get to the gym. Okay. Now you're getting to the gym every day, you know, however, however, however many times a week. Okay. Now, you know, pick up a way, do one exercise or whatever. The, the point that I was trying to get across is, you know, just kind of basically piggyback, backing off of what, like what you were saying about being able to not overwhelming yourself very early on like with, these unrealistic expectations of like mm-hmm. okay i'm gonna get you know like you said you know knock out of a, a video a week four videos a week or whatever or if you're trying to you know i want to go work out every day being able to kind of yeah set re- realistic expectations as far as like okay if for me it, like with fitness right now has been like let's get to the gym at least once a week mm-hmm. and 
let's, you know, excuse me, let's see how that goes. And, you know, depending on how I'm feeling, okay, let's go another day. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, I mean, for me, I've noticed on those days that I am actually like working out in the morning for me, like I'm like, I'm in early bed. I'm like, I know some people are like going to bed, like at three o'clock in the morning. I'm usually waking up around that time, like around three thirty, four o'clock. And for me, like, that's usually like from like 4 a.m. to like 9 a.m. I feel like those are like my peak hours Mm -hmm. of like getting shit done. So on those days that I'm able to kind of like wake up, you know, go get a workout in or even just like jump on this on a bike or whatever, go for a ride. I feel like so much energy when I come back and get to like doing whatever it is I need to do, whether it's a long shoot day or I'm, you know, having to edit or do whatever. Um, it's, I don't know. It, it's something I've noticed that like, it's, how do I say this? Like, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's been a challenge just trying to be like consistent in that regard, but allowing myself to have a little bit more realistic expectations as far as like taking baby steps to get to like this, you know, whatever this ultimate goal is. And, and it's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of shifted my, my, my train of thought as far as like with everything really with, with the podcast, with this one, like last year, I wasn't super, I was not really super consistent with it. And even now more recently, like I've been recording more episodes more consistently i've been getting back to them editing editing them and like it's i don't feel like overwhelmed as i was before where like i would have so much time in between of like doing stuff and like you know all these other things that i had going on that like it just kind of like i just like got super lazy with it to be honest Mm -hmm. and like you know more recently just kind of being able to start a start up this routine has allowed me to be a little bit more um be more feel better about like holding myself accountable in that regard and it doesn't feel like so much as a chore and like Mm -hmm. i feel like sometimes like yeah when you kind of overwhelm yourself with like unrealistic those unrealistic expectations you just kind of deter yourself from like actually getting the shit done you know well definitely and i feel like another thing too is like you just need to be able to do like something different like i know you know i've had several people ask me just like throughout time is you know like Oh, well, how do you stay motivated or what happens when you get a creative block or you get in a funk? Like, how do you break out of that? And the first thing I always go to is like, I get most of my ideas or like get most inspired when I'm doing stuff that like isn't content related. So a lot of times I'm either playing basketball or for sure, like I get most of my video ideas is like when I'm in the gym and I'm doing something else just because you have like these different like things going on, different challenges. And like, it's a different, like, you know, you you have your, whatever the chemicals that release in your brain when you're like working out and stuff, um, endorphins. And it's just like, you're feeling good. You're not thinking about this stuff. And so a lot of times that just kind of like helps me get out of the funk or helps me like kind of get back into the groove of things because I'm able to actually just like totally focus on something totally not YouTube related or content related at all. Um, and sometimes you just need that like break. Yeah. And so like, that's just something that like, I think has really helped me, um, be able to help stay consistent in different areas as well. Because if all you're doing is like literally one thing, you're waking up and going to sleep and like shooting content, like you're just going to get burnt out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I've, I found, I have found myself doing that with either that or with like other things that like, yeah, it's, you gotta kind of gotta switch it up and they have, uh, some variability to, you know, to what you do and, you know, in your, your everyday. Cause I feel like, yeah, too much of something, you just kind of end up getting, you know, getting tired of it. Well, totally. And I feel like another thing, you know, like obviously like I'm big into fitness and stuff too. Um, and it's kind of interesting because, you know, in the world of streaming, right? Like streaming is a huge thing, like Twitch and YouTube streaming, all that stuff is like huge and massive. Um, and it was like getting just so much flack for a while because, you know, kids were just sitting there streaming like 16 hours a day, eating crap and like going to sleep, like whatever. Right. Um, and then I feel like over the past like year, there's been like a shift in that world where, you know, like, Hey, you know, especially from like larger creators in that space, you know, they're showing people that, you know, taking care of your body is good because not only do you feel better, but it gets you like active. Um, and that stuff like carries throughout everything that you do. Um, and I feel like that is something that I've always tried to incorporate a little bit in my content. You know, I'm not in like the Twitch streaming world, but like as, you know, a content creator or YouTuber, whatever you want to call me, um, 
you know, taking care of your body really helps out in all aspects of your life as well. And, you know, even if I had two weeks off of work and all I did was sit in my office and create content, there's no way that would be as good as if, you know, I took some time away from that to eat healthy or get some workout in or, you know, go outside and do other stuff because all that stuff, you know, your mental health and your physical health, they do go together. Um, and it's just interesting how they're related to each other. And you got to take care of each and that just kind of spreads throughout everything. Yeah. It's, it's pretty interesting. Cause I, 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 I think what you just said now is pretty much verbatim what, you know, like when we first met, we did like the little ghost mm-hmm. spec piece. You, you definitely had a riff on yeah. specifically that where you were talking about how, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, when, when you take care of your mental and your physical, like it allows you to kind of be at that peak performance, you know? And, and I, I guess, I mean, I guess now, now that I mentioned that, like, I mean, can we talk about yeah, a little yeah. bit about how, one, you know, last year made like the spec piece with the ghost energy. And for me, it was pretty cool because I had like received like this package to from ghost to shoot some content for them. And uh, I was supposed to get a, a link up with with one of their ambassadors and and shoot some content, but it didn't end up handing out. So I had this like, you know had some like ghost energy, had a, f- a few like the new supplements and, and, and whatnot. And I was like, okay, well I have this stuff. I didn't really know too much about the brand at the mm-hmm. time just because like, okay, I just shot some content and, um, shout out to Holden, but like we, we have a mutual friend and I kind of got plugged in with him with mm-hmm. that, you know, just to kind of do some work for them. But I'm like, okay, well, not really doing anything with this. Like I want to try to do something. And like around that time I, I had already kind of been following you online and seeing, you know, the content that you put out and like, you always kind of been, you know, very supportive of, of, of ghosts has always kind of had some kind of like cameo or kind of, it, it's always been present in your content. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, what can I do? And like, I got, I was kind of had this idea of like, okay, I want to create like a, you know, some spec piece for ghosts and like, you know, seeing all of the content that they had was very, you know, tailored to, you know, specifically to like gamers or to like, you know, uh, fitness, fitness, and I was like, oh, and then here's Johnny who, you know, I guess you, I guess you, you, you kind of fall into, into mm-hmm. that realm, but I, I don't know. I feel like it was like unique. And I was like, okay, maybe I, from what I've seen, he has a unique perspective and it's kind of like a different kind of uh, a person who utilizes those products. So, you know, had this idea for a spec piece, reached out to you. And like, it's, it's honestly, even like seeing it together, like I was just watching it recently. I was like, man, like. I don't think it could have been like scripted any better of mm-hmm. like the person that I would, would would have wanted to have like to tell this story, you know, was like you and like it's I don't know. I I guess the point that I'm trying to make is is I think it's it's pretty awesome seeing how even me, complete unsight outsider, I like unknowingly like I'm not really I wasn't really involved in like the whole space, but just seeing like the content mm-hmm. that you were creating kind of propelled me to like ask you hey i think you would be a great fit for this thing that i'm trying to do and like i feel like it really was like a like a match made in heaven yeah almost. well it's cool because it's like especially like now looking back on it which we'll get into but it's just like very it was just very authentic you know what i mean yeah. like it wasn't forced at all it was very natural and it's kind of funny because what started that for me is like going way back to the start of when i started youtube is, you know, it was a side thing. It, I wasn't doing any part of YouTube off of a living. I was sure wasn't making money off it at all. Um, so I was just going to include stuff that I personally thought was cool because I thought it was fun to talk about. Um, and there's a really big, you know, YouTuber that um, is it like in the camera space, Peter McKinnon, um, that, and he would always, you know, he was doing like camera videos like or photography videos, stuff like that. And he would always include like his coffee And that was like a really big part of his channel and like just almost became like a character of his brand um, because it was just always in his videos. He was like making it. He was talking about it. um, And now like half of YouTube includes coffee on their um, channel. But I thought it was interesting because I kind of took that idea and I was just like, well, like I love energy drinks and like I love supplements and like, you know, going way back to like when I wanted to be a food chemist, that's why I part of the reason I got so big in supplements is because like flavor profiling and all these new collabs and like authentic flavors and stuff was like such a big interest to me. Um, along with just fitness, it was like a match made in heaven. Um, 
that I just wanted to start including that stuff in my own content. So, uh, you know, like I, if you go back and look at like any of my last videos in the past, like year or two years, I'll have multiple like different ghost supplements or energy drinks where I'm just like, Oh yeah, this is what I'm sipping on today. Oh, and by the way, you know, like, let's talk about this camera. Uh, just because like, I feel like those are little things that separate you from the other ones. Um, just because people get to know you personally, they know your personality. Um, and you know, it's funny, like I, there's like a few videos where I didn't have a ghost thing in there. I didn't have an energy drink and like people would comment and be like, yo, like <laughs> what are you drinking? You know? Cause it's like funny. Cause like when people return, like they start like expecting that type of stuff. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I guess we can talk a little bit about the ghost thing because, you know, um, like I said, I've been into supplements ever since I started getting into fitness. Um, that's always been a really big, um, interest of mine. And then like when ghost came out, you know, I think they're coming up on like five years old, but really like mainly been around like the last like four years, I would say, um, they were just always like kind of my go-to brand because, um, their branding is like very matches my sort of, um, vibe, you know, just with like streetwear stuff, a lot of their flavors, um, and colorways and things like that are based off of like streetwear sneakers, um, you know, just like real hype stuff, um, like doing like exclusive drops and things like that. Um, which if you come from like the sneaker world at all, it just makes sense. So it's just like, it was just a natural fit. It was just always the brand that I kind of, um, enjoyed. Um, and then once they especially came out with energy drinks, um, that's just also something I'm into a lot. Um, I just started including it in my videos all the time because, you know, um, it was just like authentic because if I was filming a YouTube video or creating content, I was usually drinking one anyways. So it just kind of became a fun character for that. Um, and then fast forward, um, as of like the end of 2021 and like as of January 1st of 2022, um, I actually like signed uh, a partnership, like influencer contract with ghost to be, you know, a full time, not full time, an athlete, um, for their brand, you know, with a discount code and all that kind of stuff, which was like literally like dream come true for me because, right. uh, you know, that was something that I always wanted, but I didn't know if it made sense because I wasn't an athlete. You know, I wasn't uh, a streamer because they recently got into the gaming space as well. Um, but you know, going back to kind of that spec piece that we did like, you know, about a year ago is it's the same thing we talked about then is, you know, content creators is this whole other market that not only obviously we like caffeine and things that taste good and stuff like that. Um, but also a lot of us are really into fitness and taking care of our body and just like cool looking apparel and clothing and hype and just hype beast stuff and streetwear, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so to me, it's probably one of the coolest things that's ever happened in my life because it's, it's something that I really envisioned and I always wanted to happen. Um, and so when it did, I was just like beyond stoked. It was just like the coolest feeling because, um, that was always a vision of mine, but when someone else saw that vision too, um, it was just really cool. Yeah. Like, and it's funny. Cause like when I first reached out, I was like, I don't even know. Cause initially I had talked to, I had talked to Ross and Josh about like helping me out with it. And it's, and even, even with like the whole dynamic, like they're very good friends and like they're people that like I look up to with like a lot of the work that they do. And they've kind of helped me kind of, I feel like helped me mold, develop into the person that I, that I have been and like the creative that I have been, like even with like the commercial work and stuff that we do. Um, so kind of wanting to get into like more specialized work where like I'm creating something for myself, like something that like I came up with yeah. and like I wanted to like execute. I was just like, okay, I don't even know. Like I want to tell us, I want to tell a story with this. And like, I kind of have somebody in mind and like, I'm not even a hundred percent sure if he'd be down to do it, but I don't even know why. Like I doubted myself. Cause like I literally, once we started talking about it, I was like, man, like I'm very, I'm very glad to like, that I asked asked him to do it because it's like it's like it, it was very it felt very authentic sure. and it's it's just kind of you know I, I guess I, I kind of want to like how how did you feel about that when you know I, I guess yeah like you said it kind of seemed like an outsider because it's always mm -hmm. even before then it has been like a part of like your yeah like your your I guess your your brand your persona right and yeah. like it's uh you know you you use you use the word like you're a caricature right of, of like you know yourself and like what 
I guess like kind of like what what how did how did you feel like whenever like I hit you up and like asked you about that? Sure. So it, I think it's funny, right? Because like when you're talking about a spec piece for maybe if someone doesn't know what that is, you know, basically you just make this essentially made up project off for a company or whatever that you, you know, is almost like a portfolio piece that you do for free so you can show other brands or other, you know, companies, things like that, like what you're capable of. Right. So like if you wanted to, I don't know, get into making fashion videos, but you don't have anything in your portfolio to do that, you know, you'd start making some spec pieces of like things like that. Right. And so that's like basically what we did for you for this, uh, this ghost project. But I saw it as almost like a spec piece for me to be an influencer for them. Right. right. Because that is basically what someone would do, you know, if they were signed to a company like that, um, it seems like a real piece that they would do and like a real profile piece and all this stuff. Um, and so that's kind of the way I treat it. It was just like a practice or a spec piece for me as if I'm already signed to them. And I can't tell you how many people have thought I've been signed to them for a long time. Um, and it's, and I think that's cool, right? Because once I became signed with them again, we keep saying authentic, but that's what it is because it's not like, Oh, Hey, I signed with this random brand. I just started promoting this thing overnight. Yeah. I'm like, no, go look back at any of my Instagram photos in the past, like two years and tell me what you see in it. You know what I mean? And so, um, it never felt forced. And so I think it was a really cool thing doing that spec piece because, um, it was cool seeing your guys' perspective on me about it. And also it was just fun for me to be like, oh, you know, like this is what it could be someday. Um, and, you know, it's funny because one of my goals out of that, obviously it was just really fun to do. But also like I did want to somehow get on Ghost's radar um, just with like, hey, you know, like this is an untapped market you guys aren't into. This is, you know, me and what I'm doing and I, how I feel like I could be an asset to you guys, you know. Um, and then we fast forward to like a year later and here we are. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's really cool how it worked out. Yeah. It, it's, it's honestly like, I don't know, like it, it just feels like a natural fit. And like, you know, when you look at like all of their, you know, a lot of their athletes and a lot of like the content that they do, it's like, you wouldn't really think that it kind of fits in that space, but it does. Like, right. It, well, it's, it's kind of like, you know, gaming such a big thing now. Right. But a few years ago you would say that doesn't make sense either. Right. But like, uh, we're starting to see a lot of these different facets or, you know, genres of things. They do have like crossover. Um, so it's kind of cool. Um, and and it, I think in a couple of years from now, we'll see more and more of this where, you know, because I think we're seeing more sort of fitness athletes and things like that are starting to become more creative with just all these different platforms, especially with places like TikTok, as people are doing more and more creative types of videos. It's no longer just like the fitness influencer posting what their workout is that day. Um, people are doing a lot of different types of things. Um, and I think it's cool, you know, and I, I don't really see the difference between a fitness athlete or a content creator or a streamer, gamer, whatever it is. Um, you know, we all have like our niche and our thing that we do most of the time, but we also like still like go to the gym and like get shit done. It's just, we come home and do different things. You know? Right. It's like, it's right. It's like you would think, right. Like, okay, well, you know, you're a fitness influencer. So that's all you do, or that's all you care about. Right. You don't it's care like, that's about an hour of their day. You right. It's going to the gym. So it's like, yeah, it's just kind of interesting. Yeah. It's really cool. You know, seeing how, yeah, it's it's cool seeing like that partnership and even just like from what I've seen like online like you you know you kind of I feel like you kind of like tapped into you know like this this market now of like you know these other people that are not only supporting you but also just kind of getting connected with like you know this now this brand that yeah. you know has these cool products and it's I don't know it, it's it's been really cool just kind of seeing how that's mm -hmm. all like fleshed out cuz I feel like it's 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 been a long time coming but it's kind of like it's I, I feel a lot of it was you know due to the fact that you've always like cared for it and it's something that's been like a part of you know who you are you know you you've like literally like manifested it in a way i know it, it is kind of interesting and it's funny because kind of just like going back to ghost for a second i feel like this you know they as of last year they got into the energy drink game and I feel like that is kind of the item that kind of helped bridge this gap between a lot of things because, you know, I'm not 
or I'm not, but a photographer is not slamming pre-workout before they go to a photo <laughs> shoot, you know, or, um, before a late night edit or things like that. Um, and so I feel like this product kind of opened up a new door, um, because anyone who's in the creative space at all knows as much as you want to joke about it. Like we like caffeine is like yeah, such a must, whether it be, it's, a, it's an essential. Yeah. It's a, it, whether it's 4am at a photo shoot or you're working on like an edit for a deadline at midnight, you know? And it's just like, it totally is just part of what we do the same way as like a pre-workout or protein is like an essential for like workouts and stuff like that. So it, it's kind of like an interesting product. I just wanted to like say that because I feel like it helped bridge this gap um, and I feel like that is definitely the product that people know of me the most. Um, but it is cool because obviously fitness is a big part of my life as well. Um, and I take a wide variety of their supplements. So it's cool to be able to kind of include some of that other stuff into my content because um, that helps kind of bridge the gap that was maybe a gap there before in my own stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool just kind of seeing that and like it's yeah, it's, I don't know, it just feels like a natural fit. So I I guess with that kind of like you know how how has that been kind of like now I I guess I don't know. It's I, I don't know if I want to say like I mean you could tell me if it's like kind of like a dream partnership, right? But how how does that make you feel about like looking at other other partnerships or like with you know with other mm -hmm. brands or like products and things like yeah. how do you how do you you know what what's that been like for you as as a growing creator, right? Sure. Um, yeah. So, you know, something that I told myself when I first started all this is, especially since it was YouTube was for fun and I wasn't making any money on it back then is I was just like, I'm not going to take deals or do partnerships with brands that I like don't already rep. You know what I mean? Um, because that just like, isn't really my style. Um, and like, I want it to always just feel like a natural fit. Um, and so, I mean, if you ask literally anybody that I know, you know, ghost has always been a gold mine for, you know, career wise to, uh, influencer wise, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so it just literally seemed like a perfect fit. Um, like I said, people thought I was signed to them before. Um, and I also feel like that's kind of maybe the right way to go about it, because if you are someone who's looking to gain a partnership with a brand that you have in mind, uh, you know, you don't want to just be like, Hey, sign me and then I'll start like repping your stuff. Like they want it to feel authentic already. Right. Um, and so, you know, I've had people ask me like, Oh, how do you do something like that? And I'm just like, you know, even when I was on my call about this partnership with them, they're just like, yeah, you really don't have to like change anything. Like, sure. Maybe you have some deliverables that you need to make sure like you keep up on, but it's like, you're already doing what we want you to do. Like just keep doing it. You just now have a discount code. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. that's, I feel like what you want it to be like. Um, so as far as like how I'm, that is going to carry over into other partnerships, um, that's a great question because I feel like now my size, I'm starting to get more and more opportunities or different things. Um, I had one other partnership before, um, which was a really cool thing. Um, it just wasn't, it didn't feel like a perfect fit for me. And so I decided to cut that off. Um, and it wasn't like in a bad way or anything like that, but it just, it didn't feel like a complete natural fit. Um, and so I just didn't want to be bothered with that because I want everything to feel like super authentic. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know where I was going with that, but you know, it's just with ghosts, it just seems like the right fit. And so moving forward, um, you know, any brand, there's a couple that I have in mind that I'm chasing. Uh, I'm sure you can think of one, but, um, it's just interesting because I want it to feel like a really good fit. Um, and we'll just kind of see what happens. It, I want it to feel natural. I don't want it to feel forced. Um, and I guarantee any brand that I'm going to be partnering with, um, it probably already seems like I am. And I feel yeah. like that's the goal. Yeah. I feel like that's, yeah. I mean, I kind of going back to, you know, like we, we keep using the word like natural fit, but like, yeah, it's, I, I feel like I've always been drawn to like any, any, any like brand deals or partnerships or anything mm -hmm. like that. Anybody like, you know, influencer or anybody that I see online that promotes like a certain product, like I, you know, I don't know. You could really tell like who's just like shelling out, like okay, like, they're just totally. after the they're just chasing the bag as opposed to like oh yeah, they actually like fuck with this product or you know this thing and they're able to you know it's 
you know, they're not really like promoting something that they don't use or they don't really enjoy. Right. And it's like, you know, I can think of multiple like fitness influencers or athletes where it's like they've been signed to five different supplement companies. Right. And every single time they're like, oh, this is the best protein in the world. Like use my code. Check out blah, blah, blah. And it's like, wait, but two months ago you said like this was the best thing in the world. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, wait, two years ago you said this was. And so it just I feel like that just makes it lose a little bit, which you know, everyone evolves and things change over time like that happens. But, um, there definitely is a really big importance on it just feeling authentic and like true. And I feel like that's like the biggest tip I could give anyone. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. I mean, people are pretty good about like being able to sniff out the BS, like, right. Honestly. And so I, I guess as we kind of like kind of start to wrap up, I, I know like I mean, you, you've said that like Peter McKinnon is like kind of a big influence and like, it's, it's, it's interesting too. Cause I feel like I can see how a lot of that, like even like this, the, like your style of like mm-hmm. editing and like creating that it's, I don't know, you, 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 I feel like there's like little bits and pieces there. Like how, how much of a, like an influence is, is he with like how you create and like how you approach things and like, and are, are there like any other like creatives or people that you kind of like look up to and kind of, you know, get a lot of inspiration from. Definitely. Um, yeah, it, it is an interesting thing because, you know, uh, something I've been talking with one of my good friends, uh, his handles, big Rob energy. He does like a lot of cool creative things. Um, something that we've been talking about is, you know, people and the difference between copying someone and then getting influenced by someone. Um, and I think a lot of people blur those lines a lot, or maybe they just don't know the difference. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, there's a handful of creators that I, if I told you who all inspires my channel and you go look at their stuff, you could, like, pick out different things about it. Um, you know, like, a few people that come to mind are uh, YC Imaging, Creative Ryan, uh, Evan Ramph. Uh, I love Evan Ramph stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's cool because, like, you know, he's, like, Evan, for example, is a creator that I've really looked up to ever since I came across his channel. I relate to him in a lot of ways. We don't do the same type of content really at all, um, but I've taken certain aspects from his stuff to my own. Um, you know, and then a couple, like, months ago, I'm checking, like, my Instagram followers, and I'm like, wait, this dude, Evan's following me. Like, what the hell? Um, and then, like, you know, since then, like, we've messaged back and forth. And same with, like, YC and Creative Ryan, like, uh, we've all talked or like been on calls before. So it's like, it's a very, um, it's a very surreal feeling. Cause you know, it still seems, it seems weird because I feel like I've somehow gained some respect from some larger careers, which it makes sense because like, you know, in the professional world, you know, I have stuff that's in times square or we just shot a commercial that was going to be airing during the Grammys, like stuff like that. So my level of content I know is there. But in the YouTube world, like I'm a small guy. I have like 17,000 subscribers. Um, So in the YouTube space, like I feel like I'm a nobody. You know what I mean? Um, But, you know, I have the creative work to back it up. Um, It's just different when you're talking professional and then like, I mean, YouTube's professional too. But you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 no, I understand. um, But yeah, it's just kind of like a cool thing where, um, you know, circling back to your question, like there are, you know, several other creators as well. Um, that I all just get inspiration from. And a lot of them make other type of content or maybe different topics. And I tried to somehow include some of that stuff in my own and make it my own. And I think it's just like, it's really cool when I feel like at this point, I've really kind of built my own, not even necessarily brand, but just my own style where if someone sees my type of videos or like my type of Instagram content, like they know it's mine. Um, and it's an interesting feeling when you start seeing other people do the same type of stuff that you do, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so it, it's cool for sure. But yeah, those are just like some of the main careers that, yeah, it's, it's cool to see. Like I, I've always been curious cause like, I, I know like I, you know, it's like, I, I know you always like share love and like, and show support, but like it, it's, yeah, it's not, not that it's like, you know, like you said, it, there's definitely like a blur, like a line, right. That mm-hmm. gets blurred where, between like actually copying somebody and just like taking inspiration and like i feel like everybody's kind of inspired by somebody in one way or another so it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of cool being able to see how you've taken those different inspirations it's kind of being, being able to kind of create your own style like, mm-hmm. like yeah like you see your content like oh yeah this you know this right. is johnny like this is you know your style and like it's it's pretty interesting because like even like i've come across some people that like 
yeah, they they have those you know similar style. I'm like, oh, okay, this looks familiar, and like mm-hmm. it's you know, oh yeah, they you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's cool just being able to see that how you know how you, how you just been able to kind of develop your own style with that. Like even even with me right now, like I feel that as I've as I'm starting to get a little bit more serious with like creating like content for myself that I'm kind of paying attention to that too. And kind of like, really like kind of going back to what we were talking about in the beginning of like trying different things. So like it's, yeah, it's, you kind of have to have like a large sample set Mm -hmm. for you to kind of be able to you know figure out like what works for you or kind of like what, you know, what your style or what your thing is. So, yeah, it's funny. Like, and to give like a specific example, um, you know, something that I've really done a lot in the past, like six months is like, obviously, you know, I'm big into like sneakers and like streetwear and stuff like that. Um, and so on paper, if you think about like, well, you're making videos about like, uh, a MacBook and videos about a new camera, like that doesn't relate at all. But I started like throwing my latest shoe pickup and like the B roll or like the top down shots of my videos, because I feel like it just added an element of like, what makes me different than a Peter McKinnon or makes me different from, you know, uh, YC imaging or whoever. Um, and it gives people a reason to want to come back to me or maybe recognize my stuff from other people. Um, and that's kind of where that started for me. Um, and then once I started getting more consistent and posting a lot more on Instagram is the same type of stuff where I was like, you know, why don't I include like cool clothes that I have or like my favorite pairs of shoes or like whatever, in some of my tech content and you know i'm not saying i'm the first one to ever do that but i'm definitely one of one of the first that just started including that type of stuff in those specific things um and so it's, it's kind of cool to see that from like other people now or um i guess just seeing other people try to like include their own stuff into their content as well because i think that's how you separate yourself from everyone else yeah it's funny because like i mean obviously like i you know i, I consume a lot of your content and like it's, it's cool because like i feel like even with you doing that you've kind of like plugged me into like some stuff put me onto some stuff sure. and i'm like oh, okay like this is dope or you know like actually you know something like i've you know somebody's told me about this or hey right. i'm seeing i've been seeing this everywhere and like yeah. you kind of like put me onto some stuff so it's well even like if you're looking to gain partnerships with brands as well like that's a really cool unique thing to do because like uh you know it doesn't make sense for like if you really think about it it wouldn't make sense for uh a brand like ghost or a brand like an apparel company or I don't know what another company would be, but it's like, they're just like, well, he does tech videos or like stuff like that. Like, how's that even relate at all? Right. But if you see like, oh, he talks about what he's drinking every single video or, hey, he uh, does an office tour and he has a whole mini fridge of our products. Like those things do add up. Um, And I think it is kind of, again, like helps differentiate you from other people. So, so I guess with that, like kind of as we start to wrap up, like what. You know, are there like any like tidbits? I mean, I, I feel like this whole episode has kind of been full of full of uh, a lot of that. And like, I feel if, if there's any like a, a additional advice from anything that you've already shared that you feel like anybody who's kind of starting out or wanting to, you know, take it to the next level or get more serious sure. about content creation. Like, you know, there is there anything that you that you would like to share that you feel like it's important to for anybody that. Totally. Um, yeah, I think we can close this out. I'll talk a little bit about Chicago. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, uh, but you know, I think a big thing for me when I started all this is, you know, I really started my YouTube channel as like a passion project and a side hustle. I just wanted like an outlet to make videos about things that I thought were cool stuff that I was buying on my own. Um, and just something that I could film and talk about that I was excited about. Um, and so it was never meant to be like my full-time thing. It was Mm -hmm. just like a side thing. Um, and then as you know, I started doing more professional work and then also my YouTube stuff was growing. Um, eventually I kind of wanted to mix that thing together. So, uh, long story short, basically what's going on these days in my life, um, is, you know, I signed with ghost, uh, January 1st to be an influencer with them. Um, and then I was offered, basically literally a dream job with them to move to Chicago, um, and join like their content team, um, and help like oversee photo and video. So, um, I am leaving my job here in Columbus 
uh, with Express. That chapter has closed as of in two days it will close. Okay. Um, and so I am now shifting everything to Chicago. So moving to Chicago Saturday and um, joining the Ghost Fam, which is crazy to think about. So not just an influencer that lasted about a month. <laughs> I'm now uh, becoming you know a content manager for them, which is a wild, wild thing. So it, it that kind of just brings everything full circle. But it's cool because, you know, the few people that I've told so far, because I, I haven't announced it yet, um, is the fact that, you know, my YouTube channel started as just like a side for fun thing. And I think a lot of people maybe don't take it seriously or they don't know what can come of it. Um, but for 100% of fact, a big reason why I got this job is because of my side hustle. And I think that's cool because you know, especially when it started out, it was never meant to do that. Or, you know, I think when a lot of people start their side hustles or different things, they might be embarrassed to talk about it or they think their friends are going to make fun of them or like their family won't support them or whatever. Um, and so I hope that if I ever can inspire someone in some way is the fact that, you know, I started this whole side hustle just for fun. I started including brands that I personally enjoyed and that I would love to work with or for someday. Um, and now I've checked both those things off my list. So it's super cool. You know, I, I think it's just the beginning for all my personal content as well. Um, and I'm definitely kind of excited to help kind of like mesh those two things together because I'm just going to talk about work a lot more and probably like see some of that behind the scenes stuff. Um, because it is just a really big passion of mine, obviously. And so, um, yeah, you know, I feel like if I could tell anyone to take something away is, you know, if there are certain goals you have, whether it be working with a brand or you want to shoot for a certain brand or, you know, like I have a buddy who wants to make content for a, a Dodge. It's like, start making some of that content for fun, you know, see if you can get on their radar, see if you can make some connections. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight, but you literally never know what could happen or especially you never know who's going to be watching you. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, I haven't really talked about that yet, so it's it's a super exciting thing. It's yeah, that, kind of, that's uh, it's actually very awesome. Like, I kn I know when you know, like when you first mentioned, it, I was like, oh wow, like that's amazing because, like, yeah, we just like you just said, like you just announced that, like, hey, you're you're like a you know an influencer, a partner, and brand ambassador for them, and you know, I felt like that was kind of you know like a a, a per perfect pairing, but you know, kind of hearing now that you're kind of actually joining the team and, and being part of like, you know, the content team, that's, you know, it, I, I feel like it would like, you will not like, I feel like now you would just be able to continue to further bridge that gap with, you know, this like different, you know, market share of. Well, totally. And, and I hope I can, you know, bring some unique ideas to them where it's just, you know, again, kind of going off of what I'm trying to do with, you know, even getting signed with them as an influencer where it's like, you know, I just have so many ideas of things I would do or the types of people we could work with or type of content we could make. Um, and I'm really excited to bring that to it, but also, you know, they have such an awesome team over there. Um, I think I can learn a lot too. So it, it's honestly a match made in heaven. The influencer thing was for sure as well. Um, and then this job is just like, a whole another level. So it, it's pretty surreal, but, um, I mean, it really is crazy what can happen. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's funny. Cause like, even like, you know, we were just talking about it, like just a year ago, I mean, you, you've been creating, you know, you kind of been, uh, showing love and kind of incorporating that as, as, as who you are, yeah. you know, for, for a long time now, but you know, at least for me kind of seeing, yeah, when we like literally just, it honestly, it's, you know, we're like in the middle of February now. So it was literally just about a year ago mm -hmm. that, you know, we shot that spec piece and just now fast forward a year later, like mm -hmm. how so much has evolved from that. Like now you're kind of, you know, on that other side, it's, it's pretty cool. And like, I'm happy to, to hear that. And like, I'm, I'm sure you're, you're very excited to kind of get, you know, close it and start a new chapter in your life. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it, it's awesome. Like I, I, you know, I guess with that, like it's, um, yeah, I, I really don't know how <laughs> any, any other way to like to really close it out. Cause I think it's awesome being able to just see that just, yeah, come full circle and like it's I, I think it's very exciting seeing the the growth that you've had and and how you know you mentioned that like yeah you know you, you kind of still feel that you're you're you still have like uh uh you know more to unlock but it's 
for me kind of seeing the the progression you know as an outsider has, has been been awesome it's very inspiring too just seeing like you know what it, it really goes to show what like a lot of like hard work and like discipline you know what it could really do and like even just you know how, you know what you said about just kind of really putting that energy out there of like the the things that you want to be associated with like you know you put it out there and incorporate it and make it part of like your everyday life that you know you, you'd be surprised what, what could happen mm -hmm. so with that being said you know plug in your socials um you know where, where do you want people to follow you tiktok instagram all of that sure uh yeah so yeah things are going to be crazy here over the next couple of weeks um i'm moving into my chicago apartment this weekend uh which i'm super excited about i haven't told anyone about it or showed anyone about it yet um but it's on like the 30th floor of this like high rise like a beautiful beautiful place so uh, all my content's going to like level up, which is really cool. Oh, I bet. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm so excited to like get in there and have like a fresh start. Um, so yeah, definitely if anyone's interested, uh, definitely stay tuned. Cause there's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming. Um, uh, my YouTube channel is Jayhawk. Uh, my Instagram is my name at Johnny Hockstetler. uh, Twitter. I am Jayhawk shoots and then TikTok, I am Jayhawk TikTok. And the reason why all my socials aren't the same is because my last name is too long because Johnny Hockstetler is too long for Twitter. It's too long oh, wow, for like, really? TikTok. Uh, <laughs> and I just, I liked uh, Jayhawk for YouTube, which uh, Jayhawk's obviously taken on everything else. So right. um, that's kind of the backstory on why all my socials are different, but you know, just go over on Instagram at Johnny Hockstetler um, and you can find me everywhere else too. So that's awesome. Johnny, thank you so much for, for coming on and thank you for creating awesome content. And like, I feel like it's, you know, you said why you may feel that you're still kind of like growing yourself and kind of still, you know, getting to where you want to be. I feel like you, you're you definitely an, an example of of what hard work and a lot of dedication and like discipline could do. And like for me personally, I, I get a lot of inspiration from it. And, and yeah, just awesome seeing, seeing you grow, man. And like I wish you the best. And with that being said, everybody, thank you for listening. And until next time. <laughs>